Um, and welcome to today's new member orientation. Um, I know that not everybody on this webinar has used TechSoup before, although I do also know there are some folks who have a relationship with us that goes back for some time. Um, in, in either case, today is to help you understand how TechSoup can best help you, uh, tell you a little bit more about us, and then, um, yeah, how what are the best paths to engage with us, and how can we be of service to your nonprofit? Um, and today, um, you've already met the wonderful Aretha Simons. This is me in the middle with the awkward beard. Um, we're also going to be joined today by Kevin Mulhall and Kelly Garrett, two of my other colleagues here at TechSoup who do um, incredible work supporting nonprofits as they move along their digital path. Um, and before I get started, um, I want to do a quick buzzword alert with some folks because, you know, when you work in the digital and technology fields, um, it's easy to think that we're all speaking the same language. But the longer I do it, the more I realize that actually that's not always the case. Um, and so I want to start with a couple of key phrases that matter here just to get us all oriented around the same stuff. You will hear in a lot of nonprofit technology spheres the notion of digital transformation which sounds high and mighty and does describe a really powerful thing, but to really boil it down into human terms, the digital transformation is really just the process of your nonprofit becoming more tech savvy and adopting digital tools to do the things it needs to do. Um, another term you'll hear TechSoup use quite a bit, not so much in this webinar, but across a lot of our other um, engagement paths is civil society. It's an important one to keep in mind because part of TechSoup's big value proposition to the nonprofit sector is that we are here to support civil society. And civil society is really around the world, all the non-government agencies and, and organizations that are not corporations. Um, and, and it's folks like you who are doing work in their communities to build a more equitable planet, to help their communities, um, and so civil society is a term we use to just broadly describe all those folks who are working together to try to make a better world. Cloud adoption is another term that gets bandied a lot in uh, bandied around a lot in kind of the nonprofit tech sphere and outside of nonprofits too. Um, uh, but but it really is simply just this you know contemporary notion of using technology tools and digital tools that are based in the cloud, right? So there's interaction between your local computer and the cloud versus the old days where you would get a CD-ROM, for instance, of Microsoft Office and load it onto your computer. And then that was where that existed, right? Cloud adoption is just using the modern version, which is just internet and web-based tools. Okay, what is TechSoup? Well, before I even give you the full list there, one thing that TechSoup is, is really grateful for you. Um, everybody on this call has made a decision to go and work in a nonprofit organization um, to try to make the world a better place. TechSoup is also a 501c3. We're a nonprofit organization ourselves, and all of us who work at TechSoup are doing it for that reason also, to try to make the world a better place. And our specific mission is to support civil society, nonprofits, um, as they use uh, technology to make the world a better place in their day-to-day -day work, right? And so um, in the United States, we are organized as a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We're also a global network. We operate around the world um, in, a, in a lot of different ways. Sometimes we partner with a, a large nonprofit in a certain country and we work with them. Sometimes TechSoup is, is the major technology provider uh, among nonprofits in a particular country. Um, our mission is to support other nonprofits as they work with technology to help build a more equitable planet, right? So um, in a for-profit context, you would describe everybody as being customers. Um, for us, really, as a nonprofit, we still think of all the other nonprofits we serve as being customers that we help. But we do also have that high lofty goal of building a more equitable planet. And that's important because 501c3s and nonprofits exist not to make money, right? 
we're not for-profit entities. We are, in fact, aiming at a higher goal, a more important goal, perhaps, of helping other people and helping the planet. Um, one of the things that we do specifically in service to the nonprofits and civil society that we work with is that we host a catalog of tech products from major brands like Microsoft and Dell and Intuit and Adobe. Um, and we do this because one of the things that TechSoup saw early on is it was really hard for nonprofits to have to go out into the broad marketplace and discover every single tool and company that was making something that they could use in their own work. So part of what TechSoup decided early on to do was to become a centralized place where all these different technology creators would be able to use our catalog to share their offers with nonprofits. And then nonprofits would be able to just come to TechSoup and be able to see a catalog of all the different nonprofit offers available to them. We work with these tech companies to negotiate pricing to make these products more accessible to nonprofits. Because we know one of the major blockers for technology among nonprofits is simply cost. It's expensive. Um, and so TechSoup tries to do what we can to reduce that overhead and that cost. Um, we also know that it's not enough to just acquire a technology product. Once you've done that, there's a whole process you need to go through of making sure you've chosen the right licenses type, the right license type. We'll get into that a little bit more, st speaking specifically about Microsoft. You have to install these platforms now on different computers, depending on how large or small your organization is. That it could be a lot of computers you have to work with. Um, and then there's the management of that software um, and the optimization of its use and the training and education of staff to make sure that they adopt that software. Um, and so we also provide courses and trainings for nonprofit staff, for board members, for volunteers um, who need to build their tech skills and expertise, uh, particularly around platforms they're working with that they may have gotten from TechSoup directly. Um, and then finally, like many of you on this call, TechSoup also does grant-based work where you know, philanthropists and foundations have provided grants to TechSoup and we use those grants to work on uh, digital adoption and technology issues in the nonprofit sector. Um, so as you can see, TechSoup does a lot of different things. Um, we're like a lot of nonprofits out there. We, move, we wear many different hats. Um, we are trying to plug in in lots of different ways, um, but all of it with this overarching girl, goal of being of service to the nonprofit community and, and making sure that they are able to um, leverage the power of technology because it is extremely powerful stuff, you know, that they can leverage it or use it um, as they need to to accomplish their mission. So I'm going to start with a quick overview of the TechSoup product catalog because it is an important part of how nonprofits engage with us. And again, as I said, the items in this catalog, we have negotiated pricing on them so that nonprofits are getting a better deal than they might be able to get on the open market, right? Um, and so the first thing is on the homepage of TechSoup to get to the product catalog, you could get there in the top navigation, pretty self-explanatory there. There's also you know, this nice big clear orange button on the front page of the site that gets you there. Um, and one of the first major brands that a lot of nonprofits come to TechSoup for is Microsoft. Um, you know, for sure, unless you're running an Apple computer, it's extremely likely that you are using the Microsoft operating system on your desktop or laptop computer. And there are some specific products that really are the centerpiece of what TechSoup offers to nonprofits. Um, and some of this, um, my colleague Kevin Mulhall will talk about in a little more detail in a few minutes. But the first one is Microsoft 365 or Office 365 Enterprise. You remember back in the, again, the old days of tech, uh, when you had the CD-ROM that you loaded on your local computer, you know, there really were two big things from Microsoft that you needed. You needed the, the current version of Windows, 
and then you needed the current version of Office, right? Um, of course, these days it's not a CD-ROM. All that stuff's being downloads, downloaded straight from Microsoft servers to your local hard drive. You're running it locally. There's updates that are being applied from the cloud all the time. Um, and, and Microsoft now really actually condenses that Office and Windows offer into one package called Microsoft 365, right? Um, and uh, that cloud-based platform of Microsoft productivity software and operating system is available through TechSoup. Um, and what's great is that because of our social mission to help support nonprofits, um, when you work with TechSoup to get your Microsoft 365 subscription set up, like we help support you all through that process. We help you choose the right licenses. We wanna make sure that you're not paying more than you should be paying. Um, and that those licenses are implemented properly um, and that you're able to administer them and that your staff and volunteers can use them. And all of that is support that comes through TechSoup. If you get that stuff directly from Microsoft, there's no guarantee that you're gonna get that same level of support as you would from TechSoup, right? Um, but we really, again, in service to the sector, that's, that's part of the work that we do. Um, there are also older versions of this Microsoft software available. There's Microsoft Office on-premises, um, which you can get for $222. <laughs> you can get a version of that without software assurance. Um, software assurance is a technical backend piece of it that lets you update within a certain time frame. Um, of three years um, if there's a new version that comes out. Um, and then of course the Windows Pro full operating system, which we can call Windows 11, right? That's at the moment is what it is. Um, that's also available through TechSoup um, uh, or an upgrade to whatever edition of Windows you currently have. These are core Microsoft productivity uh, platforms that, as I said, unless you're using an Apple computer, the chances are extremely high that you're using some, if not all of this already. Um, the big thing that lots of nonprofits are thinking about right now um, is if you're, if you're using these legacy or older on-premises versions of Microsoft Office, that you really should be moving to Microsoft 365 or Office 365. You should really be moving to the cloud versions of this stuff. Um, it's much more secure. Uh, the collaboration features are just superior. Um, and uh, TechSoup really encourages you to look at going down that path for sure. Microsoft is not the only brand in the catalog though by far, even though they're one of the largest. Another really big one that we have been just huge fans of for a long time and who've worked with TechSoup for a long time is Adobe. If you're a communications professional in the nonprofit industry or you're a designer, maybe specifically a web designer, um, you've used Adobe products by now, guaranteed, right? Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Dreamweaver, all of these are staples of the creative arts online and in print production, frankly. Uh, I've used them throughout my career in communications, and I'm sure many of you have already. Um, we have individual memberships available to Creative Cloud. Creative Cloud is the condensation of all those different high-end graphical and design and communications platforms from Adobe. Um, we have Acrobat Pro DC in particular. Acrobat Pro DC is the Adobe standard for managing PDF documents, right? Portable document format. That's what PDF stands for. Adobe invented that. Um, and so, you know, their platform for managing PDFs is an Acrobat Pro DC. But what I want to highlight is one of the newest things from Adobe in the TechSoup catalog, which came in at the end of uh, 2022. It's called Adobe Express. Um, Adobe Express is kind of an all-in-one platform that lets you do all sorts of graphic design and editing, including video editing, at a much easier, uh, more intuitive level for the interface. So in the past, if you've tried to work in Creative Cloud, as soon as you start trying to do that, you, you really understand that you need some training. That could mean that you spend 12 hours doing YouTube videos, or perhaps you actually have a degree in graphic design and you've learned to use these platforms in school. You've self-taught yourself. But Adobe Express is a very different bar for entry, much easier to use. 
doesn't require that depth of technical expertise that Creative Cloud does. Um, and for some folks, that's enough. Um, and uh, the great thing is Adobe Express is available through TechSoup at the moment at no cost to your nonprofit. Um, so Adobe is definitely one of the big brands that a lot of folks come to TechSoup to get. Um, a third one worth highlighting is uh, Intuit, Intuit QuickBooks in particular. Um, you know, every nonprofit has to have tight, excellent control of their books. You have to know how your money is flowing. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, amongst the many, many lessons that we learned again during COVID, um, paper and pencil accounting systems are not good enough. Um, and uh, when nonprofits were forced into this situation of going to remote work exclusively, especially in that first part of COVID in 2020, um, there were plenty of nonprofits suddenly who could not do their accounting because it was all paper and pencil based and people weren't, you know, in the office together, um, face to face, human to human anymore. Um, and it definitely presented some real struggles for some places. Um, if you're not already using Intuit QuickBooks, we have found that over time, it is the most popular accounting package that nonprofits come to us for. Um, there are a few variations of it, um, but QuickBooks Online is the one that uh, is really kind of the centerpiece of that offer at the moment. There are other versions of it, but um, QuickBooks Online is really the place that you want to go. So if you're thinking about how your own accounting system could do better using digital technology, QuickBooks is the place. There are many other brands in the TechSoup catalog, and, and here I am just highlighting a few of them, um, because the truth is what you probably want to do is just go into the catalog itself and take a look for yourself. Um, nonprofits have lots of different software and hardware needs, um, and you know we don't have time in today's webinar to cover every single thing that's possible out there, but I just encourage you to go into that catalog and take a look at what's available to you. Um, you may have noticed that I did just mention software and hardware, and that's because we also do have access to hardware for nonprofits specifically. So I want to turn to that for a second. Um, we provide nonprofits with access to new and used laptops and desktops and servers and networking equipment. Um, we have internet hops, hotspots. We have some headsets. Um, and we often get other hardware that's a little bit more difficult to find. Um, for instance, I think we have some uh, phones that are coming through our catalog as well, like mobile phones. I'm talking modern, you know, touchscreen mobile phones. Um, and uh, we have access to Dell, Lenovo, and HP offers all through the TechSoup catalog as well. Those have a $0 admin fee at the moment. Um, uh, Journey Ed is another hardware brand that uh, nonprofits come to TechSoup for. It contains lots of smaller, um, you know, like headsets, things like that, mice, keyboards. Um, and then one thing that I do want to call out specifically is TechSoup's been a pioneer in the use of refurbished hardware. Um, and again, this kind of grows out of our cool, interesting you know, crossfire of like being a technology enterprise for nonprofits, but at the same time, having a social cause at the heart of why we do our work. Um, and years ago, uh, this, this, this wonderful colleague of mine, who's now retired named Jim Lynch, was an early person to look at the amount of green or of electronic waste that was starting to build up uh, as everybody adopted new computers and got new laptops and stuff and, and said, you know, Surely there has to be a way that some of this technology can still be used and not just discarded in a landfill. And so Jim and TechSoup started pioneering the idea of refurbished technology where used computers um, are brought in by a refurbishing partner. They evaluate the computer, make sure it's still functioning properly, uh, make sure everything is wiped properly in terms of the hard drive, that there's no security issues, that kind of thing. Um, and, and then those can be resold, you know, at a lower price, obviously, than a brand new unit, but a completely functional desktop or laptop computer um, and uh, gives it an additional life. It's a very environmental way to go. Um, and, uh, 
you know, TechSoup's not the only one doing that work now. You can find lots of partners out there doing refurbished work, but we were one of the pioneers. Um, and again, as I say, this is like part of our social mission as well. I think it's kind of cool to highlight. Um, to get to the hardware section of the TechSoup catalog, you have to go through a little jujitsu, which is why I've got it up on the screen. You have to go to the product catalog and then hardware appears on the left-hand side. Maybe sometime in the future, we'll make that navigation a little more intuitive, but, but that's how you find it at the moment. As I mentioned at the top, it's not enough anymore for nonprofits to simply get a technology platform from TechSoup or, or from anywhere, frankly. Um, in some cases, the real work actually happens afterwards um, because you have to implement the platform. You have to keep it updated. You have to integrate it with your other systems. You have to train staff to use it. Um, and so there's a lot of work that comes around with getting a new platform beyond simply acquiring it. Um, and so over time, TechSoup's come to offer a suite of services to nonprofits that are different than just like getting a branded product out of the TechSoup catalog. These services exist as a way for TechSoup to help your nonprofit work with those technologies. And we're always bringing new services to market. I'm going to highlight a few of them today. But first, how do you find them? They're in the drop down nav there under services at the top here. Um, and you'll see there are several different uh, items here. And I'm going to just highlight some of them here. Um, we have a help desk service. You know, you think of this as like pretty much the low bar of like how we can be helpful. Um, it's, it, you know, the help desk service is a monthly or annual fee and it's unlimited support for like one device, right? So if you're a super small nonprofit or you've got one thing to really worry about, help desk actually might be a super helpful thing to work with TechSoup on. Um, as I mentioned, when uh, nonprofits make the decision to go to one of Microsoft's cloud offers, we work with nonprofits um, to help them with that adoption for the, e for the migration of email and data into that platform. So that's another service available through TechSoup. Um, we can help with the installation of um, on-premises versions of Office and Pro installation on that as well. Um, we have a larger offer called Managed IT, and this is for a nonprofit who may be looking for a larger, more comprehensive package of help from TechSoup. Say you've got several computers and maybe you know there's a server or something in the background and um, you're looking for help managing all of that stuff over time. Uh, TechSoup's Managed IT program might be a really good thing to learn more about. Um, because that's the whole intent is to give you a, a bigger picture, more holistic management of that technology stack. Um, and, you know, one thing we know about nonprofits is unless you're working in an extremely large nonprofit where, where you have a lot of staff, it's very rare for there to be a dedicated IT director. Usually the person running IT is spread across at least one other job. Um, and sometimes you find actually the folks running IT at a nonprofit are admin staff who happen to have really good technical skills, um, or they just are really good at intuitively knowing how to manage technology. And um, these folks emerge as the person like, oh, go and ask, you know, Bob or Janice in the back office. They, they re they're really good with technology. They can troubleshoot the stuff. And then that person sort of over time emerges as the IT director, but everybody wears many hats. And so managed IT is a great way to get an additional level of support um, when you don't have like a full-time dedicated person who can be on the tech stack all the time. Um, there's another one I wanna call out to you in that services dropdown called the digital assessment tool. Um, you recall I said at the top that one of the things TechSoup does is also provide grant-based programming where we work with funders and, and produce um, you know, grant-based objects. And our digital assessment tool is an example of that. This is a tool we built to help nonprofits understand how well they're doing across several different areas of practice within their nonprofit um, with regard to like using digital technology. So for instance, you could go into the digital assessment tool 
you could you 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 run through a series of questions, um, for instance, around perhaps your nonprofit's finances um, and and how you manage them and what tools you're using, um, and then at the end of that, the digital assessment tool provides you with a score essentially that says, hey, you know, this is this is your maturity level in this particular area of practice. Um, Maybe it's something that you want to do better at. And so here's some, here's some content and suggestions about how to do that. But you may want to check out the digital assessment tool if you want to do some analysis of your nonprofit and understand how you could be using some technology better. Right. Another big thing we've also understood about nonprofits and tech for some time is one of the biggest areas that technology gets used, and we don't always think about it this way, but once I say it, it'll be obvious to everyone here, I think, is um, tech is a fundamental communications tool, right? Nonprofits have this huge need to communicate with people all the time. You've got to communicate with the people you serve. You have to communicate with your board, with the funders who supply the money that your nonprofit uh, relies on to operate. You have to communicate with your own staff. Sometimes you need to communicate with large groups of people, maybe the general public or members of the press. All of these different communications channels really in the modern world are digital. Um, and a lot of it really rests on two specific things, your website and your email, um, your email service, right? Um, and so TechSoup does provide website and digital marketing services to nonprofits to help you um, as you try to work out how to do a better job with your communication stack, right? So uh, we do website consultation and development work with nonprofits, and we're going to look at things like what do you need your site to do, um, what are the security needs, you know, what platform are you on, um, and, and I'll be straight up front with you about this. Usually when a nonprofit wants to work on their website, they need to have thought through what the budget is that they have available to do that work. Working on a website is not free, um, but uh, we can help you think about that stuff. And if you're ready to actually allocate some budget toward it, we have the resources to help you figure out how to take the next step. Um, the other part of comms is like people coming to your website, but then there's also how do you out, how do you reach out to other people? And I mentioned email as being like almost the primary way that we do that. But nonprofits have a couple of different digital marketing uh, channels that they use. We again can provide consultative services on that, um, help you do a better job building out how to do your email marketing, for instance. Um, and again, like I say marketing, and for a lot of nonprofits that falls on deaf ears because you're like, well, we're a nonprofit, we really don't do marketing, but you can substitute the word outreach in there. And, and now we're speaking the same language, right? So it's like outreach to other people using email. Um, lots of nonprofits use a great offer from Google called the Google Ad Grant. Um, which in, in a condensed description is uh, up to $10,000 a month in AdWords, which is Google's search engine, right? Um, and you can advertise on that search engine. Um, they, they cap the amount of money a nonprofit can spend per ad. And so sometimes nonprofits have a hard time figuring out how to spend that full 10 grand each month. In any case, um, we do provide a service to nonprofits who are working with Google ad grants to help you, um, you know, do better with your ad grants, figure out how to use up more of that budget and how to make better ads. Um, we have new things coming into the services catalog as well. Um, if you have a site, a website that's already up and running and you use Google analytics, you already know probably, or at least I hope you do, um, that in July, uh, Google will have moved to a new version of Google Analytics, um, and uh, your nonprofit needs to transition to that new version of Google Analytics, and you want to do it as soon as you can um, so that you don't begin to lose legacy data because you're still in the old system. Um, and so we do provide service now to help nonprofits do that migration to the new version of Google Analytics. Um, in addition, for a lot of nonprofits, especially brand new ones who haven't even set up their own website yet, um, one of the first technical hurdles folks run into when they launch these kinds of enterprise ideas is, how do I actually 
get the domain for my website, you know, the domain, like, so for us, our domain is techsoup.org, right? How do you get your domain for your nonprofit? How do you set it up? Um, and some folks know how to do that and that's great, but not everybody does. And so if you are struggling with domain registration, that is another service that um, TechSoup can help you with as well. Um, a big service that we are providing nonprofits in, a, in an umbrella scope is also education and training. And we have a whole division called TechSoup Courses where we have provided now over several years um, learnings uh, across a bunch of different technology products. Uh, and all of it is written specifically with nonprofit staff in mind, using nonprofit use cases, right? Because we think that's important. If we're going to provide support to nonprofits, let's really focus on how nonprofits are using tools, not necessarily how like, you know, big business is using those tools. So TechSoup courses is available as well underneath the services drop down. Um, I'll tell you that the courses site actually is a separate site from TechSoup.org. You would have you, you have to set up a separate login and password for that courses site, um, but well worth taking a look at. Um, in that courses site, let's see. Here we go. Yeah, uh, you know, over seventy thousand learners already have tapped into courses which are available both in English and Spanish. Not every course is in Spanish, but we do have bilingual stuff in there. As I said, everything's designed specifically for nonprofits. Anyone can sign up for TechSoup courses, right? So there's no bar there. You can just show up, sign up, set up your passwords, you're good to go. Um, there's numerous, you know, there's all sorts of topics in there. Again, like the best thing would be go check it out rather than me running off a list of them. I do want to highlight a specific piece of that course's offer, which is called the Microsoft Digital Skill Center. Uh, in partnership with Microsoft, we've put up a bunch of different educational resources up in courses uh, to help nonprofit staff, you know, and the, like the favorite thing I always lean to, pr probably the program that I use most in my world is Excel. And I'm probably not alone on that in this, in this call right now. Um, Excel is incredibly powerful. It can do lots and lots and lots of things. Um, and learning how to use it fully is like a full-time job in some regard. Um, Excel is one of, of course, the most popular offerings in that Microsoft Digital Skills Center. It's not the only one, but that's the kind of thing that you would be looking at there. Um, some of these courses are organized into tracks um, where we, you know, try to take a lot of different things, put them together, and then by the end of that track, you've got this great overarching view of stuff. So there's a foundational skills track available in the courses uh, platform, and it goes through a bunch of different things like project management, Excel, like I just mentioned, remote work, fundraising, grant writing, email marketing, etc. So this foundational skills track might be really interesting, especially if you're newer to the nonprofit industry, or if maybe you're the only person at your nonprofit, you've just started one, this kind of education might be super helpful. Okay, that was my overview of nonprofits uh, and how TechSoup can help. Now we're gonna just pause and go a little different direction here. I'm gonna bring up Kevin Mulhall, who's my colleague. He's a senior technical customer success manager at TechSoup, right? And so, I remember saying up at the front that one of the great advantages of working with TechSoup, for instance, on Microsoft or on a lot of these platforms, is because our mission is to support you and we're not a for-profit company, that means you can engage with live human beings when you've got questions and problems, right? So Kevin is one of those live human beings. And, and trust me, if you get Kevin, you're going to get an answer and you're probably going to get your problem solved. But um, I'll let Kevin take it away here and tell you a little bit more about the customer success team at TechSoup and how that works. Thanks, Nick. Uh, very kind words. Uh, good morning, afternoon, evening uh, to those that are joining us. Um, again, Kevin Mahal. Senior Technical CSM on the Customer Success Team. Um, for those of you that have not heard of the Customer Success Team, that's okay. Um, there'll be a slide in a, a, a couple of minutes here um, that kind of breaks down a little bit more specifically what we do. Um, but I wanted to jump in just initially uh, for a kind of high level uh, discussion about Microsoft Cloud. 
Um, as some of you may be transitioning uh, from on-premises volume licensing to the software as a service option. Uh, to that end, I actually have a poll. Um, I'm a poll person, so I'm going to go ahead uh, and I'm going to launch uh, this question right here. Um, you, of course, do not need to answer it, but is your organization currently using Microsoft Office 365? I'm going to give this 30 seconds and then we'll see where we're at. The numbers are kind of jumping around. This is pretty exciting. I'm very curious to see where we ultimately land on this. Give it about five more seconds here. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results here. 80%. Um, pretty awesome. Um, I think we had started a couple of sessions ago up into the upper 80s, low 90s, uh, made our way down to like the upper 60s, and now we're back up. So uh, this is hopefully a good thing um, that we're seeing here. So uh, moving forward to the next slide, please. Um, so for those of you within the 20%, um, and maybe to the 80%, depending on where you find yourself as, as a partner, uh, working with a partner, um, there is a process to accessing Microsoft 365. Um, it's not quite as simple um, as just requesting the product, getting fulfillment information, et cetera. Um, it begins with you registering at nonprofit.microsoft.com, um, receiving an, uh, a notification through our validation team that you've been approved um, to onboard the solution with us, you, we would need to be accepted as a reseller. Um, and then you would need to integrate a tool um, from our website. Um, it's not, again, not necessarily the most straightforward process. Uh, and so and to that point and to the screen that you see here in the bottom right corner, that beautiful chat box that popped up, that is a way to get a hold of us. Uh, we provide uh, free assistance for helping you complete the registration process. If you elect to have TechSoup as your partner of record, which I hope you do, um, we can then guide you through the remaining portions of those uh, steps. As part of that consultation, um, there's also the ability to, of course, discuss the products. There's a lot of uh, jargon, as Nick mentioned earlier, that goes into it. We're, we're talking of different license types, hybrid versus web only, core licensing, add-ons. Don't worry about that. The focus that we want you to have is on first identifying that you have a desire or a need for 365, and then just simply coming to us. Um, that's really, we, we, we are here to be a trusted uh, advocate and support, uh, to support your mission and your goals uh, and help you uh, gain access uh, to the platform. If you could go to the next slide, please. So there's a link um, that's going to be within the slide deck. Um, I think Kelly also pinged it in. Um, this is, it's our cloud consultation solutions uh, form. Uh, upon completing that, that information then comes to our CSP team. And as I mentioned, they can help with registration at the Microsoft nonprofit portal, choosing the right license, recommendations for services and courses, implementation of your licenses. And of course, that support comes to you at no cost. Uh, we, as your, as your partner, um, on this we journey, we want to make sure that not only do you get access to it, but the adoption and onboarding portion uh, is very critical. I also pinged into the chat uh, a link to a document that I personally created. Um, I call it an onboarding checklist. Um, it is available uh, in view only mode. You can download it. If you do click on the link, you'll be able to download the documentation. I think it serves as a very good reference point uh, for moving uh, forward in the process. So Next up kind of comes into like customer success. If you could go to the next slide, please. What is customer success? You've probably heard the term thrown around um, a bit. It's kind of exploded almost even in pop and popularity. And the, uh, the idea of moving towards a more member focused, member centric type of model. That's what TechSoup is committed to. That's what our team solely exists for. Uh, while we are small, I'd like to think that we are mighty. Um, the basic uh, services that we offer, again, these are at no cost, uh, are across a wide range of different um, services, beginning with technology review and planning, organizational strategy, 
identifying opportunities for potential financial and volunteer supports for you smaller orgs. We know that's very, very important, and we especially know how difficult uh, that can be. Uh, triaging managed support projects and services. Somebody had pinged in earlier, um, I believe, regarding um, data migration. That's your. That's what we're here for, to be able to identify what the project specifically is and which one of our partners would be best suited to hit manage that. And then providing quotes and invoices for bulk product requests. Um, this is something that's a little bit different. You wouldn't necessarily get this in the general interface within our website. And we understand that uh, now, uh, probably more than I've seen in the last four years of being at TechSoup, um, organizations need to provide you know, quotes. They need to be able to, to uh, provide that type of information to their accounts payable, their purchasing de departments, um, et cetera. Um, so that's that's what we do. Um, I'm going to toss my email uh, in the uh, chat, as well as the alias to our link. If you could go to the next slide, please. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand it on over to Kelly. Great. Yeah. Kelly Garrett, you are up next. Kelly is another wonderful colleague of mine here at TechSoup. Um, Kelly is in the account management group uh, and client services, and um, she'll tell you more about that. But just to frame it up, these are the folks that can help you manage your relationship with TechSoup. They're not the people who are going to tell you how Intuit QuickBooks works. And they're not the folks who are going to tell you how to configure Microsoft 365. But if you have trouble logging into your account, or you need to add a new user or remove an old user, or you need to change a phone number, or you need help figuring out how to do something with your TechSoup account, Kelly's going to be able to help you do that. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Nick, so much for that introduction. Um, I hope everyone's having a great Wednesday here. Um, and excited to be presenting. Um, as Nick said, my name is Kelly. I'm the Associate Manager for Client Services, which works directly with members on their registrations, uh, their qualifications, navigating the website, navigating their account, things along those lines. Um, so we're here to help. And I've been putting into uh, the chat right now, our new, our contact us page was actually updated this morning. And it's got really great resources on how you can reach us, which I'm going to go over here in a second, but I just wanted to put that link in so that you have know exactly where to go to see where and how to contact us. Um, perfect. So one thing that we hear from a lot of members is questions about, you know, products and services, you know, what's included, what's not included, how do I get it, things along those lines. So when you're interested in requesting an offer, it could be a product or a service, um, always, you want to always go to the TechSoup website, www.techsoup.org. That is for U.S.-based organizations to request offers, um, to check to see if there is what is available. I always recommend going to the product catalog that you see highlighted here, and Nick kind of called out these different tabs, but you see the product catalogs here, and then on the uh, top left corner, you have donor or company. That's a really great way to see if we're partnered with a company. It will be in that list. Categories, seeing what categories are out there. You know, there is a um, different things like accounting, antivirus stuff, great things that Nick pointed out earlier. And of course, that hardware catalog that we talked about. Um, once you do find a product you're interested in, for example, I used uh, QuickBooks Online Plus here. Uh, it's a really popular product. We usually get lots of questions about it. So it was like showing this page. But once you get on um, one of these offer pages or product pages, as we refer to them, you're going to have always three tabs of information. And sometimes these are easy to miss because they're a little small and they're kind of gray on white, but each one's technically a tab. And if you click on each name there, you'll see a different page of information appear. Most of our programs that we're partnered with, um, including Intuit for nonprofits, um, has a strict no refunds and no exchanges policy. So you always want to make sure that you're thoroughly looking at the description. Middle tabs are usually subscription details, system requirements, something along those lines. And then there's the rules, eligibility, and restrictions tabs on the far right. You want to make sure you review all of that information and then give us a, you know, a call, a chat um, if you have any questions before you check out. So you really want to make sure you're 
on board with what you're getting, you understand what the admin fee is, things along those lines before you move forward with that. Because once your order is fulfilled, a lot of times you can't return it. Um, awesome. And next slide, please. So after you've reviewed your product that you're interested in or you're poking on the website, you're not quite finding stuff and you're like, I need to help with this. I recommend going to our TechSoup support page. It was recently developed and is kept up to date and answers most pressing questions. A lot of stuff about Microsoft's in there as well. Um, and we are constantly um, adding information and flushing it out more to make sure it's meeting our members' needs. Um, the way to access that is on any of the TechSoup.org pages. You'll see there is a help button next to the login um up in the top right corner and that's where you'll click to get to see the most recent um and updated faqs and help articles uh, next slide please perfect so on this page you'll see some um top question or top categories for questions that we get you can click through um there's promoted articles if you scroll down this page and you can always use the search feature if you're looking for something so Say you're trying to check out and it's telling you're not eligible for a product. You could go and look at the rules and eligibility um, section here or type in eligibility into the search and all the related articles will appear. And that usually answers most folks questions about, you know, why is it saying I'm not eligible when I'm registered and qualified? And there is a difference between being eligible for a program and being qualified with TechSoup. Since most of our programs do have um, eligibility restrictions based on mission, location, budget, things like that. So great places to start is here. And if this doesn't answer your questions, the offer page didn't have to answer your questions or anything on the website didn't, that's when you can reach out to client services. Next slide, please. So this was our old contact us page as of this morning. So the next time I do this presentation, will be a new slide. But as of this morning, we did just have this updated. And again, that URL to the new contact us page is in the webinar chat um, in your Zoom. So you can click on that um, and that will show you what the current one looks like. But um, basically it breaks down that we have a couple different ways to get in touch with us. Um, probably the fastest way is our chat feature. On almost every uh, TechSoup, um, website page. It's on www.techsoup.org specifically. It's not on that event website. It's not on, you know, um, the webinars one, things like that. It should be on the main website. And you'll see a help button that you click to open up a little window. Uh, next slide, please. Once you open that window, you will see as long as our um, chat is open and available, you will see a live chat button within that window where you can click on that to get started and enter the queue to wait for the next available representative. TechSoup does not use AI. You are speaking to a real person um, that is talking to you live. So just a heads up, sometimes people assume they're talking to a robot and you're not, you're talking to a real person on my team. Um, so that's a great way to get in touch with someone. They can usually see what page you're on to from where you click the help button. So if you're on like a products offer page and click it there, they'll be able to see it. If you're on your in your my account area and you're having trouble finding some information. Again, this is a great place to go because it's going to connect you to a representative that's kind of going to be able to see what page you're on and go from there with assisting you. Uh, next slide, please. Perfect. So a little breakdown. All of this information is, is on that contact us page. So, you know, you are going to get a copy of these slides and transcripts and all that stuff. Um, but you can, oh, I always recommend go to the contact us page, see what's currently available and what our hours are currently. Um, and that's always kept up to date to ensure that we're, you know, getting you guys con connected with us properly. Uh, so live chat is available Monday through Thursday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. And on Fridays, it's open all day from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific. We are located on the West Coast. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's a West Coast Pacific time. It's not East Coast time or middle of the country time. Um, again, that's located at the bottom right corner of most of our pages on our website. You have to click the help button first, and then you'll see that live chat option as long as we are available and um, our chat is open. We also have phone support. Um, this can usually have a little bit more of a wait time. Um, not always, but we have been experiencing long wait times lately. So, you know, chats are something I always recommend going to first. And, you know, you can, if you really want to talk to someone, you're absolutely welcome to call us as well. 
Um, our phone hours are open in the morning, Monday through Thursday from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. So the nice thing is, is that if you miss our phone hours in the morning, you'll have our chat option in the afternoon. Um, and on Fridays, there's no phones, but we have chat all day long. And once again, either option, you're speaking to a live representative. It's not AI. It's not a robot. Um, last but not least here, um, Nick did mention, um, you know, what we can and cannot do. Thank you so much, Nick. Um, client services is TechSoup's customer service and account management team. We have so many donor partners, which is fabulous. That's why we're here. We're here to help the sector. But we have so many partners that we can't become experts on every single product that's offered. We have general information we can provide you. You know, if we have an FAQ, um, we have general information from the product offer page, things like that, that we can point out to you and direct you to. Um, but if you're asking for in-depth functionality questions, you purchase, you know, a product and you need support with it, a lot of times we're going to be sending you to the partner that donated or discounted that offer. So for example, if you're having trouble navigating your QuickBooks online account, you need to add a bank account to it, uh, you don't know how to run reports, my team's not going to be able to assist you with that. I personally never use QuickBooks, um, so I'm not sure how to navigate there. And Intuit likes to handle the support themselves since they have access through their system and they have their trained um, experts that can walk you through everything. So you're more than welcome to contact us first for support or direction on where to get support. Um, we also can point you out, point you to um, TechSoup services. Again, we have got that lovely service that will support you. But client services, mostly general questions. How do I check out? How do I update my account information? Things along those lines. Um, but we'd love to talk to you. You're more welcome to contact us and we'll definitely point you in the best possible direction that we can. And that's all I've got um, for TechSoup's client services today. All right. Thank you, Kelly, so much. Um, and then to bring it all back to everybody else, thank you so much for coming today. And again, I want to say thank you also in the sense that like, we know that every one of you has made a decision to, to work in the nonprofit sector. And that means that you've made a commitment to making a better world, helping your local community. There are so many different ways that nonprofits serve the world, serve the country, serve each other in our own individual cities and towns. Um, and so thank you for choosing to do that work. It's the same reason we've chosen to do that work at TechSoup as well. Um, you know, we care about making sure that nonprofits have the tools that they use. We do think that technology can be a powerful, powerful tool for you to use as you accomplish your mission, whatever it is. Um, and again, to reiterate, TechSoup is a 501c3. We are a nonprofit ourselves. We do not exist to make money. We exist here to serve you and to help you with technology. So welcome to TechSoup. I hope today was informative, um, maybe a little confusing in some moments, but that's the nature of technology. Um, but I encourage you to please take a look at that catalog, take a look at the services that we offer, think about where your nonprofit is going next on technology, um, and then reach out to TechSoup. Start with us. We can help you orient. We can help you figure out where to go next and help you get the resources that you need. Um, and then uh, thank you, Aretha and Kelly and Kevin for today. Um, and uh, as the slide on the screen says, please do complete the post-event survey when you receive it. You'll also be getting an email with a link to the deck that we've been looking at today. There are live links in that deck that you can click on and go to particular spots on the website if you want to. Um, but with that, we'll wrap it up. It's 1054 here on the West Coast. Thanks so much for your time. Have a great day.